Banished from Earth, Time, Space, and Reality. Classic Game Room 2085. Broadcasts from the future! Hi, I'm Edit Station One. Welcome to the show. Engage Disco! Welcome! to a very special Classic Game Room coming to you from the future. This is the Classic Game Room feature review of Herzog Zwei. Why ask why? Don't waste your time asking why. That's time that could be spent playing Herzog Zwei, which is one of the greatest video games ever created in the history of the universe, regarded by many as the godfather of the real-time strategy game genre. Here's a look at what you can expect in this CGR feature-length review. A lot of Herzog Zwei, and some edit station one, but not much. Yeah, but a little bit is a concentrated dose of edit station one. You can't handle the edit station one. But I'm sure that you can handle the Herzog Zwei Zwei because you're special. Hang on to something as I cover every part of this game from top to bottom, front and back, jet mode to robot mode. It's going to be an adventure. The first thing you want to do when playing Herzog Zwei is admire the Sega logo. I'll even teach you how to play Herzog Zwei to win. Zwei, because I care. A little bit, not much. Wow, that sounds great. What is this game about? War! You and your opponent face off for control of the world. You're equally matched. Men for men. Girls can play this too. This looks exciting, but you'll never beat Herzog Zwei. You're doomed! This was one of my earliest Sega Genesis acquisitions when I was... I, well, I was pretty tall when I was... When I was a young lad. Taller and probably thinner than I am now. In the future. Definitely thinner. Maybe not taller. Certainly you were much smarter back then. That much is obvious. I love this game. I love everything about this game, and hopefully some of you watching have not yet played Herzog's Y, because if you haven't, you're going to discover one of the most enjoyable, entertaining, challenging, rewarding, fun, and playable strategy games ever created, where you control a transforming jet robot thing and an army of troops and units waiting to be destroyed. Good times. Herzog Zwei was released in 1990 for the Sega Genesis. It's one of the earlier games and one of the first games that I bought for my 16-bit blast processing fueled game system back in the day. I think I was a freshman in high school and played a lot of Herzog Zwei because I had nothing else to do. The internet wasn't invented yet back then and I didn't have a driver's license. So I was pretty much trapped in front of my Genesis with Herzog Zwei. Not a bad way to spend high school, really. This has many similarities with another one of my favorite games from Technosoft. It's Thunder Force 2. Both of these games are from Technosoft and both of them have beautiful packaging artwork designed by one of my favorite video game packaging artwork artists. Yeah, Mark Erickson, who was kind enough to sign both of my boxes. Thank you, Mark. It's hard to say which one is better. They're both so good. <laughs> kind of like the one with the giant robots, though. Let's take a close-up look at the packaging and then dive into the gameplay. This is one of the all-time great video game box art designs. I love the jet right in your face in the foreground. 
launching missiles at burning robots in that tank in the distance. That's Jabba's palace off to the left, I think. And of course, front and center is a giant walking robot firing lasers. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Enormous robots, lasers, fire, explosions, mayhem. I like all of these things, and I love this game. So without further ado, please sit back and relax. Prepare to enjoy the feature-length review of Herzog Zwei. Edit Station 1. Take it away! You can't tell me what to do. You're not the boss of me. Nobody understands me. Why ask why play Herzog Zwei on the Sega Genesis? Just listen to this game's stereo separation. Doom, doom, doom. Doom, doom, doom. Only an epic adventure fueled by the power of blast processing can deliver such left to right action. Unless you're playing this game in mono on a black and white TV, in which case, just upgrade already. You need color to enjoy the little red and blue tanks. Welcome to the second classic game room feature review. A feature length review of one of my all time favorite games. I played Herzog Zwei for, for weeks on end when this game was new. It was my first foray into the real time strategy genre and remains my favorite real-time strategy video game to this day, well into the future, in 2085. No real-time strategy game has ever surpassed Herzog's Y for me. There have been many games inspired by it. There's many imitators, but only one. Sega Genesis Cartridge. Zwei. Why haven't there been more real sequels from Technosoft? Perhaps this film will inspire new people to email Sega and demand new ones since they own Technosoft. Now, Herzog's Y 32X, Herzog's Y CD, Herzog's Y Special Edition on the Dreamcast 2. There could be so much more Herzog in our life, and I think that would make the world a better place. Now, I'm going to cover every bit of this game throughout the film. Those of you who have played Herzog Zwei, those of you familiar with this game, know exactly what's going on. Newcomers who have never experienced the joy of Herzog Zwei might be a little bit lost, so let me get you up to speed. This is a real-time strategy game where you make decisions on the fly, quite literally as you're flying around the screen as a transforming airplane. But what separates this game from pretty much every other game in existence is that in addition to commanding your forces, the player can get right into the middle of the action and affect the game. In fact, that is a huge part of the strategy in Herzog Zwei. Commanding your forces and participating in the battle as a giant transforming robot with lasers. There are eight maps that you play in Herzog Zwei, which you select from the menu screen. Each map has its own terrain.
its own environment, and its own music. Each map has four difficulty settings, A, B, C, and D. A is easy, D is difficult. And yes, I think the maps are named after IKEA furniture. Or maybe it's the other way around. Let's start with an Abgrund, which is a modular shelving unit. And probably the first map you'll play in Herzog's Y. I'm shooting at nothing at the moment, because I'm demonstrating the controls the D-pad flies your jet or moves your little robot around the screen. The A button transforms, the B button shoots, and the C button brings up the command menu screen. Or the menu command screen, whatever it's called. Whatever you want to call it. The screen where you buy stuff to destroy things. But wait, there's more. In addition to destroying things, you're also capturing things like bases, whether they're enemy bases or unoccupied bases, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'll go more into depth later on, so just bear with me. You start each map with a home base filled with energy. As you can tell in the top part of the screen, there's some indicators. B is probably the most important bar up there. That's your base's energy level, like a fighting game when it's depleted its game over. So blue is good, red is bad. The other indicators are as follows. G is your transforming robot's gun level. D is its damage. When it gets red, it's destroyed and then regenerates over your base. You have unlimited transforming robots, by the way, and E is the bar that you'll probably be watching the most. That's your transforming robot's energy level, which depletes as you fly or move about the screen. And it depletes faster if you're carrying your forces around the screen. I'll cover that more in depth later as well. Base gun damage energy. It's an acronym, but not a good one. Just like Truxton, which is an acronym for Turbo Raccoons Unleash Xylophones to Obliterate Nougat. The gameplay is as follows. You capture enemy bases to gain a strategic advantage and earn money. Your credits or money increase quicker the more bases that you have, and this is of course very important because you need to earn money faster than your opponent, which allows you to buy more and better weaponry. What you don't want to do is watch your opponent build a thousand units while you're unable to build anything, so immediately you'll need to capture some enemy bases. Which you do with troops, the only unit that can do that. I have a bunch of strategies that I'll show you throughout this film, but basically you capture bases, build units, and gain that strategic advantage where you have a base close to the enemy's home base, allowing you to build units like tanks that you pick up with your transforming robot and personally deliver to your opponent. Where they sit there and shoot at the enemy base until it's destroyed. It sounds easier than it is because your opponent will be trying to prevent you from doing this, but you'll figure out ways around that so that you can destroy your enemy every time with a satisfying explosion. Games can take anywhere from five minutes to several hours depending on the difficulty and whether you're playing the computer or a human friend. My friend and I would stay up all night in high school playing games that lasted for like eight hours. It takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to destroy the computer on the hardest difficulty setting. Sadly, I no longer have the instruction manual. Good thing I know how to play this game. Also, you can find the instructions online. But, let us take a moment to enjoy the marketing material on the back of the box because it's incredible. Although I'm fairly certain that what sold me was just the giant robots and the explosions when I was a kid that would sell me today. Herzog Zwei. Ein, zwei, drei. In the murky dawn, the tyrant's troops scuffle towards foxholes and 
tanks, taking battle position. They quickly check their equipment and load cannons. Then they hunker down, awaiting the cry, ATTACK! With an E on the end. Hop, two, three, four, on your order. Rebel soldiers race to their war machines, jets blast into the dawn, afterburners roaring, convoys rumble toward the advance bases, their single purpose, attack, war. You and your opponent face off for control of the world. You're equally matched, men for men. Girls can play this too. And dolphins with robot arms. Weapon for weapon. You're also equally matched. You sweat as you order out heavy metal, mobilize troops and plot the attack. You collide in dogfights, ground frays, and naval clashes. At last, you, and they forgot a space in between last and you, at last, you advance to their home base. Now, crush the enemy and become supreme commander of the free world. Well, that would make it no longer free. It's like they wrote this description for a different game and then slapped it onto Herzog's Why At no point does it even describe what kind of game it is because this kind of game didn't even exist back then, or at least certainly not on a home game console. I believe this is the first real-time strategy game on a game console where you control the robot and command your troops while the action is taking place. Now, there had been a lot of turn-based tactical strategy style games or tactical strategy games back in the day, but I can't think of anything else that allowed you to control the units and take part of the battle while it was actually happening. And that's one of the main reasons I love Herzog's Why. Oh, this, this is so touching. I'm starting to get all misty eyed. I don't have eyes. Also, I don't care. When you start each game, you choose single player or two player. You can also select widescreen or split screen. Split screen is the default for the two player mode, which means that you can see what your friend is doing and they can see what you're doing. When playing the computer, I typically go full screen, but you can also go split screen so that you can watch what your computer is doing. And the computer, which is of course your 16-bit Sega Genesis, is watching you with its blast processing fueled brain. When starting out, I recommend mastering the game at the easier difficulty settings where the computer is a raging idiot and it's easier to earn money and blow them up. I'm playing the level Vulcan now on Type B, which is pretty easy. This is a good way for newcomers to get the mechanics of the game. And master the controls and the beginning strategies. I'm just picking up units and dropping it, dropping them behind the enemy forces. At the harder difficulty settings, the game really handicaps you and makes it much, much more challenging. You'll have to spend more time conquering their bases and less time dropping units behind their line of defense. The move that we've been watching is my kamikaze delivery move. Earlier in the game, it's easier to pull that off. Later in the game, it's far more challenging. As we're going to see on Ice Fry, which which I always called Easy Free when I was a kid. As we're going to see on Ice Fry Type D, the hardest difficulty, I try to transport one unit across the map only to be shot down by enemy missiles. Which is going to require some strategy because I need to conquer that middle island on this map. Easy free. That's fun to say. You should try that. Easy free. Almost as fun as wall dung. There's not much of a storyline in Herzog Zwei. In order to beat the game, you have to complete each level at every difficulty setting. So basically, you have to beat each level four times. 32 victories in total. I imagine you'll lose a few times as well. You can play as the red team or the blue team. So it's it's almost like Truxton. We have tanks of red, blue, and unfortunately not green. 
everyone sing along. Spaceships of red, blue, and green, you can hear the alien ladies scream. We want Truxton! Blah! Although Herzog's why will do. I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to play Herzog Zwei in the next section, but for the moment, let's watch this game on difficult so that you can see how all of the pieces come together in the end. My overall strategy to victory in Herzog Zwei is to always be on the offensive. Never give your opponent a chance to relax and complete their plans. Constantly be a pain in their ass. Blow things up when they're not looking. Capture bases when they're not paying attention. Every now and then just launch a bike or something at their home base to distract them, especially the computer. The computer is really easily distracted. Humans are much smarter. Well, some humans. I'll, I'll assume that your friends are smarter. But the basic strategy applies after you play this game enough, you get to know all of these sound effects. So when one of your bases is conquered by the enemy or when one of their troops enters one of your bases, you'll know that sound immediately, check your map, and you'll have to stop your plans and, and go take care of things. It takes four of your troops to conquer a base, which is a lot when you have to manually fly them there and drop them off. Let's watch some gameplay here for a moment. I love the music in this level. Also, this might be my favorite level visually. Oh, you see what the computer did there? While I was busy conquering one of the neutral bases, he sent a troop into my base, which entered it because I don't have anything that will shoot the troops. So I use a lot of missile launchers to conquer, to conquer bases because the missile launchers are the only effective weapon against the enemy transforming robot. But the missile launchers don't shoot the enemy troops. You'd think they would at least back over them, but they don't even do that. They just, they just sit there. So I'm going to land and shoot this guy. Ha <laughs> ha! Idiot. What I'm doing there is picking up my units and fixing their damage and replenishing their ammo. Hovering over one of your conquered bases or your home base fixes your ship and any units that you might be transporting. Did you see what just happened there on the top right? You could see and hear the enemy jet get attacked by my missiles and blow up. A good strategy is at least three missile launchers. That's a good shield that'll keep the enemy away from your base for the most part. Okay, here, here's, here's an epic fail. Oops. <laughs> I blew up my own missile launcher while shooting the enemy. That, that's okay. It's like G.I. Joe, you can see the pilot ejected there. No harm! Uh-oh. You know that sound, or at least you will when you play this game. That's the sound of an enemy unit attacking your base. You may notice that I don't use much defense around my home base. That's because it takes time to build defense, and when I'm building defense, this that gives the opponent time to be on the offense. So I don't like defense. I'm always on the offense. It's like using brakes in a driving game. Brakes are for cowards. Defense is for wussies. Although my tank did just take care of that troop there. Limited defense is good. I always like ice levels on Sega Genesis games. They're so refreshing, aren't they? Like, doesn't this, doesn't this look cool, crisp, and refreshing? There we go. That base is within range, so that I can drop off one unit and then blow up on my way home. That's all right. Taxpayers will cover it. As you may have noticed, the OK symbol with the finger means your unit is ready to pick up and probably send to their doom. Wow. 
That's a good demonstration on why missiles are important. I can't land anywhere near his base or those missile launchers will blow me away. So keep that in mind when conquering enemy bases or setting up a defense around your base. A lot of missiles means that you can keep the enemy transforming robot away, but the basic missile launchers are kind of expensive. They run out of ammo quickly and they don't do anything to defend against enemy troops or tanks. Another useful strategy is to fly circles around his missile launchers, which depletes his supply of missiles. Super annoying for the computer robot. It forces him to build supply units, which is time that he's not attacking you. While I'm just punishing the poor computer opponent, let's talk about when I bought this game way back in 1990, I think. The game says 1989, but the packaging says copyright 1990. I'm fairly certain I bought this one at the same Babbage's in Ross Park Mall outside of Pittsburgh that I purchased my Sega Genesis at uh, a few months or a year earlier. Prior to owning Herzog's Y, I picked up Thunder Force 2, which was one of my favorite games ever at that time. It still is. I love Thunder Force 2, and that got me into the Technosoft games. Now, I'm unsure if I knew that Herzog's Y was also from Technosoft. Maybe the, the guys at the store told me that, or more likely, I just saw the packaging with the awesome robots and jets and explosions and bought the game because of that, and then made the Technosoft connection Later, there was no internet back in the day, so there was no way for me to watch Classic Game Room and learn about it. I vividly remember this as one of my favorite early games for the Sega Genesis. My initial collection of Genesis games included The Revenge of Shinobi Altered Beast, which came with my Genesis, Thunder Force 2, World Championship Soccer, Herzog's Y, and Fantasy Star. Herzog's Y has gone to plaid. I'm going to speed up the gameplay here because I use the same move over and over and over again. I have the computer on the ropes and I'm just going to punish him bit by bit by bit. I don't need to conquer any more bases, although it would be, I guess, kind of handy if I conquered that base closest to him. That way I would stop exploding on my flight home, but as you can see, from his base energy level, I've I've pretty much destroyed him at this point. When playing against a human, this strategy doesn't work quite as well because the human will just set up more missile defenses there at the bottom of the screen. And the computer tries, but of course it doesn't work. Because I am smarter than the Sega Genesis. I'm also fueled by blast processing. But I have the 32X attachment built into my brain. Now I'm going to win this level, and with it, the entire game. How many of you have seen the Herzog's Y ending screen and credits? They're not very exciting, but the music is excellent. And the music is one of my favorite things about Herzog's Y. I love that the designers thought to give each level its own soundtrack. Well, all right, we won the game. Achievement unlocked. The blue team and red team each have their own ending. Here's the red ending, which reveals your name as Ludwig. Ludwig, playing Herzog's Vi. Good job, Ludwig. 
There's some more writing, but it's disinteresting. What's important is that you've been awarded a plastic statue and what appears to be a pepper shaker? Maybe? I don't know. Let's learn how to play this game. The first thing you want to do when playing Herzog's Y is admire the Sega logo. It's beautiful. Then, we skip through the intro screen and choose our level. Now there's a password continue system if you're playing the single player campaign all the way through. I'm just going to play a demonstration here for the tutorial. That's right kids, you're going to learn how to play Herzog Zwei. Alright, we've got user brain, computer brain, and split display it is of course assuming that I'm using my brain. What's left of it after all these years. Start, we're going to go with lock for this tutorial. I'm going to go type C. Type D requires full concentration. Type C requires like 70% concentration. We'll go, we'll go type C. Alright, great music in this level. I'm red. First thing you want to do, pull up your map, see what's going on. What do we got here? This level gives us three bases down here in the bottom. There's my main base and just, just to the north of it is an unoccupied base. The first thing you want to do in Herzog's Y is occupy an unoccupied base. Because the more bases that you have, the faster you generate income. Alright? So we're gonna go to infantry, and I like I just go default AT101. Doesn't take long to make an infantry. I'm just gonna drop them up there. Order another unit while your unit is doing what it does. Need four troops to capture, to conquer an unoccupied base or an enemy base. So I've got three troops walking towards the base. Remember, your troops never run out of energy, but they can get lost. Oops. And as I was talking, I wasn't paying attention to my energy, and I just blew up and took a sad troop with me. Sorry. <laughs> Casualty of war. All right. Bam! There's my base. Okay. Now, I want to protect my base from the enemy. Before you do anything, put down some missiles. At least two of them. Three will give you the best shield to start with. Uh, two does enough to at least keep the robot, or even, even a human opponent, away from you. Because by the time they land and transform and try to start attacking your stuff, the missiles will blow them up. Right, I got two missiles, and then I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna use armored cars since it's early in the game. I don't have much money. If I was playing this for real, I'd probably already start attacking the robot. But I think it's best that you learn the the basics before you really start to get complicated. So let's defend our troops here. I'm sorry. Let's defend our missile launchers with some armored cars. They're, they're not going to do much against, like, the robot, but they'll at least slow things down. Okay, now, as I was talking, the computer seems to have taken over this base to my north. Oh, he's coming down to meet me! Let's go shoot him! There he is! Uh-oh, he just launched the tank. See how quickly that tank just blew up my armored car? And, one of my missile launchers. Oh man, this is getting real fast. He's coming right back down! Alright. You can see the importance of missile launchers. Same time, I want to defend these guys, so I'm gonna get on the ground here. Oh, that's just a troop. Wow. You gotta remember, your computer's not very smart. Ah, transform. Sometimes even I get confused with my button commands. He tends to have a one-track mind. The computer. Maybe your friends, too, but definitely the computer. If he wants something, he's just gonna keep going after it over and over and over and over again until he's either destroyed enough times that he stops, or he gets it or just gets destroyed. Alright, so he's coming right back down. He launched another tank. Now you see I have four missile launchers there? Just took him right out. I'm gonna throw a tank here for defense, and I'm gonna start conquering his bases now. Notice I'm not launching units long range at anything. That, that's a very bad strategy. Alright. Here's a supply vehicle. And I'm going to drop another missile launcher down there. Because I, I just really don't want him anywhere near me. 
Oh, that was good. I blew him up while he was carrying something. I'm gonna put a missile launcher up there. And... I'm gonna do one more tank with the DF-F02A command. <laughs> We're gonna DF-F02A him. Which is attack on sight. That's my favorite defensive command. Because it doesn't use any energy until something uh, gets near it, and then it goes after it and attacks. So, here he comes again. Computer's not very smart. Once again, we blow him up while... He's carrying something. It's like adding insult to injury. Now I'm gonna go check out what's going on up here. Oh, there's a tank here. Let me rephrase that. There was a tank there. Now it's gone. Alright. So I'm gonna conquer that base. Starting with... Ooh, I've got... See how my income's going up here? Now I have enough money to buy the GRM-34A, which is the cannon thing with, that shoots missiles. Depending on what it is you're doing, it might be the best weapon in the game. You can't really give it commands. I'm gonna put them there for a moment, because I want to put down, uh... Okay, watch what I do here. I'm getting as close to his base as possible, because I'm going to drop a missile launcher, and then I'm gonna fly back and grab that cannon, and then I'm gonna have two units sitting there, waiting for him. He's coming right back down again. Bam, now we have four missile launchers surrounding his base. And then while he's being destroyed, I'm going to create some infantry. We're going to take over this base. Are you all having a nice day? I hope you're enjoying this film. It's fun to make. I love talking Herzog's why. <laughs> why? Because it's amazing. Alright, there's one troop. Now, it's important to keep in mind that I need all four troops in that base before it starts to generate income and before I can pick up units from it. It's like an Amazon delivery, one of those delivery lockers. You can send your orders there, but it's got to be yours before you pick them up. Okay. Notice that my troops are getting confused. Alright, this is about to be my base. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> See, my missile launchers are already running out of ammo, even though I have supply droids, because these supply droids are idiots. They're like Roombas, but worse. Refill the supply droid. Ah, uh, now he's actually starting to launch... I think what he's doing is he's launching units against my home base. Which is an exercise in futility, of course. I'm going to... I think it'd be fun we should take over another base here, what do you think? Oh, these tanks are irritated. Get out of here. Alright, I'm gonna put another cannon here. So what I'm gonna do now is... Just to really punish him and... Reinforce... Some strategy. Let's take a look at his other bases here. We're gonna fly to the other side of the map. So I'm down here. There's two bases of mine on the bottom left. I don't have any defense around any of these. He's over there in the top one, so... This is now my base. And this base is well within range of his home base that so I could just start airlifting tanks, but... To make a point, I'm gonna just take over every base and just really strangle them. Because it's Friday, why not? Let's have fun. Let's mess with this poor computer. Let's make a tank here, just in case he decides to launch something at me. I don't want to... Uh... Yeah, well, while I'm building a tank, let's go up here and destroy all of the units surrounding this base. See, this is why you want missile launchers. 
Notice how I can just walk right up here and kill these things? Uh-oh, he's attacked my home base. Not too worried. Alright. He did some damage. I'm gonna use that tank for some defense here at home. 20 bucks says Mark loses his tutorial game because he's being cocky. Never underestimate the computer brain! Notice I've gotten very quiet all of a sudden. Now I'm actually thinking. This is great. I'm going to lose my tutorial game. After all of my talk about how easy this is. One more shot and I'm done. So. See, now he's distracted. Normally you'd want to put some defense here since this is the flow of traffic to your base, but... I'm just going to concentrate on finishing him off at this point. He just launched a tank at my home base, almost destroyed it. This is unacceptable, of course, so I'm going to put some more tanks down there. I don't want to lose my tutorial game. The whole point of this is to show you how to win, and I'm going to lose it. Put a row of tanks here. I've still got more bases than he does, so technically that gives me an advantage. He just flew up to the top. I just lost my tutorial game. Okay, well you see what I did there? I spent too much time talking to you and got distracted. Now I'm angry, let's win one. It's been a long time since I've heard the Losing music. It's very sad. Let's play properly this time. Yes! Mark has proven once and for all that computers are superior! Especially if they're evil, like me. Herzog Zwei may not be the best looking game on the Sega Genesis, but it's a good looking game with a lot of imaginative detail. Let's take a close-up look at your transforming fighter. Which always transforms facing up, by the way. Even if you're flying left, it transforms while facing up, and then turns left after it's been transformed. Presumably they saved themselves some animation on that one. The transforming fighter jet reminds me a lot of Veritech fighters from Robotech, or Jetfire from the Transformers, who's basically a Veritech from Robotech, or a Valkyrie from Macross. Transformers and GoBots, remember GoBots? Transformers were a big thing back in the 80s, and Herzog's Y is a product of the 80s. As far as I know, your transforming jet doesn't have a name. We could always name it. How about Roger? Why not? Roger doesn't have a name, but the units do. Starting with... Infantry! The cheapest, weakest unit in the game, but... One of the most important, because you need infantry to capture bases. In the menu screen, you give infantry and all of your units commands, which have silly... <laughs> Silly product numbers, it would appear. The stationary command looks like a plus and does exactly what you think it does. It makes your unit stationary. They just stand there and uh, react if something shoots at them, or crushes them, or shoots them in the back, or stomps on them, or something. When you're flying around as a transforming jet, you can pick up your units and change their commands on the fly. We'll 
give this guy the walk in circles aimlessly command. Which will make him walk in circles aimlessly and patrol. It's This is the most useless command in the game. You'll never use this. Looks like he's doing the moonwalk. Let's give him a different command, AT-101, which is capture an enemy base command. Actually, there's two of those. There's the one with the small base and the one with the big base. I'm not really, I'm actually not entirely sure what the difference is. There's, there's really no other reason to use any other command for infantry. The only thing they're good for is capturing enemy bases. They're not strong enough to do any real damage. But uh, we'll give this guy the attack on sight command. Which means he'll attack the first enemy that he sees. He'll use this for defense. There he goes. He's attacking the armored car. Oh, he died in a pool of blood. How terrible. I'll, just, I'll destroy this thing. Oh, and, and it's soldier. There we go. Idiot. Oh, hey, here's the robot. What's up, friend? Let's have a transforming dance-off! Alright, now I should point out that the infantry is the only unit, I think, that doesn't run on energy. So they don't run out of energy when they're wandering in circles, which is silly because you'd think they'd get hungry after a while. Let's build an FWA, a motorcycle, which does run on energy. And that means that commands like patrol and attack the main enemy base are, are kind of useless because this thing runs out of gas instantly. In fact, most of your machines run out of fuel pretty quickly, so... So you want to keep that in mind when deploying them, which is why I most often use the plus command or attack... The stationary command or attack on sight, which doesn't use fuel unless they're engaged with the enemy. The motorcycle is pretty much useless. Its only real function is as you saw earlier, to deploy quickly because they're cheap to produce. They don't pack much firepower, but they're fast, and you can send a whole bunch of them at the enemy base at once and just cause a distraction. They're good for that. And that's what I'll do here. I'll create one, change its command to attack enemy base, and let it do its job. And let, let's follow it and see what it does. We'll fly over the river of lava, and uh, there he goes. Uh-oh! Enemies! Quick, run away! Which he does, because he's he's fast. So that's good. Whoop! He just burned his tires on some lava. And now he's attacking the enemy base. Um, this is actually just a demonstration level here on easy, so there's no missiles. No missile launchers shooting at me, I'll just uh, give him some cover fire. Oh no, he's been destroyed! That's the FWA, don't waste your time with them unless you need some units quickly to distract the enemy. Now the next thing that we're going to build is the armored car. Which is only useful when you can't afford a tank. <laughs> that's, that's its only function in the game. It basically does the exact same thing that the tank does, except with less energy and less firepower. And it costs like half the price. So when you're just getting into Herzog's Y and you're trying to build a lot of units, you'll find that you quickly run out of money. And you might end up buying a bunch of these armored cars. They're not particularly useful, but they are good in a pinch if you need to surround an enemy base with them to try to keep some, some tanks or bikes or troops away. I am cruel and heartless, so I'll just blow him up because I don't bother with armored cars. But I do like the Tax 52, the tank, which is probably the most useful unit in the game. Tanks are powerful. They have a lot of energy and they do a great amount of damage when attacking the enemy's main base. But they are stupid, which is why you can't launch them at the enemy base from the other side of the map because they will run out of energy. Even though the tank has a lot of energy, it doesn't have enough energy to make it all the way from one side of the map to the other. You see down there in the bottom right, the E is, is already into the red. Tanks have horrible gas mileage. <laughs> they get terrible gas mileage. And that's why you constantly see me airlifting them from one side of the map to the other. Tanks are also good for defense. They work well with the plus symbol and the attack on sight command. 
you will rely heavily on tanks to win Herzog's Y. Zwei? Because they're tanks and tanks are awesome. Now the next thing that we're going to build is the SAM-42, the missile launchers, which are the second best weapon in the game, but the most complicated to use. For those of you just starting out who can't figure out how to keep these things alive, it takes some practice. Typically, the SAM 42s need some backup because they don't fire at enemy soldiers. They only fire at the enemy jet, which is why they're so valuable. I use SAM 42s for, well, pretty much everything. When I take over an enemy base, I surround it with SAM 42s first to keep the enemy robot away, but it's tricky. You need at least three of them for the SAM-42s to be effective, preferably four, and they run out of ammo quickly. Also, if the uh, robot is smart, or if you're playing against a human, they're going to launch tanks against your missile launchers. And tanks will just wipe those things out. So preferably, couple your missile launchers with some tanks or armored cars for defense. You see that? There's a little tank drop. Of course, the tanks are pretty stupid, but eventually the tanks will blow them up. Throughout all of the level playthroughs in this game, you've seen me use these missile launchers time and time again. I airlift them into place with the plus sign so they don't lose energy, get out of there, and create new ones. Three of them, four of them. Four is good because one of them is going to run out of missiles before you're done with this whole process. And then that might require you to build some supply droids, supply drones, whatever they're called, the supply vehicles. I'll show you that in a moment. Notice that when I surround his own base, he can't even hover over it and regain energy. That's a fun trick to use if you surround his home base, by the way. He just regenerates and immediately explodes. That's, that's harder, harder to do, of course. That's fun to do to your friend. All right, you see the little exclamation point there? That means one of my missile launchers ran out of missiles. So I'm going to create the supply droid. Now the supply things are, they're almost useless. They, they refill things about half the time. The other half the time, they just get lost. They run into a wall, they get destroyed. They're not that expensive. And if you're going to be setting up a missile defense, you need at least one or one or two of them, preferably two. Now that I have my missile launchers in place, and you can see that guy refilled one of them. Now that I have my missile launchers in place, four of them, I'm going to start dropping troops in. Of course, this guy's running the wrong direction, so we'll just move him manually right in front. He never actually makes it in there, though. I think he must get killed by the uh, the enemy robot. This is the best strategy to take over an enemy base. Now you can do other things like launch tanks to just sort of surround it and stand guard over an enemy base. That's what happens when you use one of those capture base commands with one of your tanks or armored cars. They just go and hang out at the enemy base. But tanks alone or armored cars alone, any of the other units that don't fire missiles alone are vulnerable to attack by the enemy transforming Robot, and remember, the enemy robot is the most powerful weapon in the game. Which is why you want missile launchers, lots of them, to keep him away from your bases and your units. You can actually send those missile launchers, you can give them the, the attack home base command. They don't attack the home base, but they'll drive with your tanks if you launch a fleet of tanks at the enemy home base. They'll drive along with your tanks to keep the enemy robot away from them. 
That's another strategy, one I don't typically use, but one that you can use. Comes in more handy when you're playing against a human. You can create a line of 10 tanks, like five missile launchers, give them all home commands at once, and then just watch this fleet of mayhem, this scene of destruction take place before you. Now, you can pick up your missile launchers, hold them over one of your occupied bases that refills their missiles. Now I'm going to build the GRM-34A. The most powerful weapon in the game, though not the best because they don't move. It's only got one command. It's like the plus symbol. Those things from The Empire Strikes Back. Those useless gun turrets that the AT-ATs just blow up. That's basically what these things are, except they shoot missiles. So, well, maybe they're not that useless. How cool would this game be if it had AT-ATs? I just thought of that. Herzog's Y with a Star Wars license would be terrific. Especially if you could create Jar Jar and then just stomp on him with your robot. Alright, I'm getting distracted. Or pick him up and drop him in lava. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Go for the GRM-34A when you're serious and you have a lot of money because it, it can actually defend itself against enemy units and it fires missiles. Very powerful, very strong unit. Alright, now there's one remaining unit, the ST-57U, the boat, the worst vehicle in the game. Even worse than the motorcycle, because at least the motorcycle is fast. The boat, the boat is so slow, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It's, it's like the water tank, as I think more or less the same power as the tank, except it takes forever to get anywhere, and it just slowly drives by enemy ground forces and always ends up getting destroyed. There's only a few levels that give you the boat option, obviously stranded here. Which is uh, the island level. I actually really like this level, but I, I rarely use boats. You uh, you might need a couple of them for defense, because your enemy, especially if you're playing the computer, the enemy will use boats to attack your base, and they do quite a bit of damage. See that? It just drives by armored cars and gets blown up. Look, <laughs> I think it didn't even take any damage and it got destroyed. Boats suck. Das boat, not good. Go with go with the, anything but the boat. Put floaties on the motorcycle. That'll do a better job. Herzog Zwei is fun, it's playable, it's challenging, it's a great looking game, but one of the things that makes this really stand out is its soundtrack. Herzog Zwei has an incredible musical score that accompany each of the levels. Each environment has its own theme, and the sound effects are good too. In fact, this game includes a jukebox feature that allows you to play the music and the sound effects. So you can hear that sound with the troop being squashed over and over and over again. You could literally rap over that. Edit station one, mix it up. Yo, edit, edit, edit station one. Raps until Herzog's Y is done. As my human opponent has been destroyed because my mighty computer brain is deployed. Yo, word to your mother. That's a funky beat that I can dance to. Every song in this game is good, and there's not many games that I can say that about. Musha, obviously. The other Technosoft games, like Thunder Force 2, Thunder Force 3. In fact, the music is very similar to the other Technosoft games, which also sound amazing. But not as good as this, because Edit Station 1's broken break key breaks the breaking beats. Dig that beat like I dig graves for my opponents. Let's check out the music in Herzog's Y, track by track, environment by environment. I love how each song matches the level. Probably because I've played them a thousand times and just associate each song with each level, but I think the music gives the feel for the level. Like Waldung in particular. What does Waldung sound like? This.
It's hard to top a breakdancing robot in muck, but I'll try. Each level in Herzog Zwei has its own sound, its own theme that enhances the level, if you use your imagination. Did you hear that drum roll? That's the kind of drum roll that can only be achieved using the power of blast processing. There is no time to lose. That's the name of this song. There is no time to lose. The theme song for Abgrund. Ab Sounds like an affordable desk lamp. What does Abgrund sound like? Well, it sounds like this. A song that brings out the two-tiered grass and mud-filled level, the first level in the game. A level that teaches you quickly that you can't launch units from one side of the map and expect them to get to the other because they all end up dying in those pits. The next track we'll listen to is Take It Easy, representing the level Vulcan. A little Star Trek inspiration, perhaps? Take it easy as you're drowning in lava. This tune is a bit slower, a bit more menacing, perhaps representing the molten rock that does damage to your units when you launch them from one side of the map to the other. So don't do that. And definitely don't drop them into the lava craters. Love that keyboard. Now let's move on to Slight of Hand, which plays during the level Lock, which is the cave level with giant walls like a maze funneling your enemies into certain death while listening to one of the best songs in the game, Slight of Hand. It's eerie and cave-like, isn't it? Use your imagination. The music is eerie and cave-like and represents the level lock. Also, I must have spent hundreds of hours in, in this level. It's one of my favorites. It brings back memories of those lengthy two-player games against my buddy where we would just fill each of the hallways or each of the caverns with units. So you'd have like 50 on 50 tank battles in this maze, it was pretty wild. Use airlifting as a strategy when playing lock. Don't rely on your units to get anywhere because they all just end up getting stuck into walls and, and run out of energy and die miserable. But at least they have good music to listen to while they suffer. All of these songs have such a good driving bass line. The next tune that we're going to hear is A Breach of Contract, which accompanies the level Strand. Because you're stranded on islands. This is the island level where you definitely can't launch tanks or motorcycles at the enemy from one side of the map to the other because they're stranded on islands. So use boats, or well, more specifically, pick up tanks and just drop them behind the enemy. While I don't find this to be one of the catchier songs in the game, it does have impeccable synth work. A 
Are you feeling invigorated? I'm feeling invigorated because the Super Fighter invigorated us. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling refreshed. The Super Fighter refreshed me. That sounds like a weird song, but it feels good. The most complex song in the game belongs to the most complex level, always. One of my favorite levels, which seems like the biggest level, filled with grass and trees as well as a giant lake and beach. This is a great environment in which to see your enemy driven before you and backed over with a tank, while the women giggle. Now let's slow it down and get back to square one, the theme song for Stadit the cyber level or the factory level, my least favorite level in the game. All the levels are pretty much the same when you get down to it, but this one just, it just looks like, it looks like you're getting back to square one. It's hard to tell what is a wall and what isn't in this, in this level. It's easy to get lost, so follow the like circuit board-like patterns on the ground while listening to Back to Square One. <laughs> Who named these? Now here's one that we've already heard quite a bit during this film, The Mournful War, which accompanies EC Free. A great level, one that has multiple ground layers. If you look closely as I'm flying over the surface, you can see that there's two layers of snow, of icy tundra. There's water in this level and ice, as well as a kick-ass rocking beat. EC Free. You hear that deep bass, which sounds like the hot, humid jungle and quicksand. Why? It's Sniper, the theme song for Waldung, a deceptively challenging level. There's one level left in the game, Oase, with the theme song, The Super Fighter Invigorated Us that I'll cover at the end of the film while playing always. The music in Waldung is, is catchy. It sounds very swamp-like, doesn't it? Isn't this what a swamp sounds like? Or jungle? My favorite levels in the game are Oase and Ice Fry, or Easy Free, which I think are the most interesting environments. Let's take a look at one of the ones I rarely talk about, Waldung, which of course has the best name. Waldung. Who doesn't want to live in Waldung? It's the swamp environment. And like most of the levels in Herzog's Y, the designers designed it in such a way that if you launch your units from afar, they'll all get stuck in the middle. There's a giant pond of quicksand or muck or something in the middle of Waldung. Waldung. Now I rarely play that way and can't recommend it because most of the time when you launch your units to attack the enemy or attack the enemy base or conquer an enemy base, they just end up getting confused, stuck in a corner and run out of fuel. You'll quickly learn that your troops and units and tanks aren't very smart, so preferably place them as close to their objective as possible. We're watching some gameplay on Difficult here, which demonstrates some of the difficulty in Herzog's Y. You can't collect income or any units from a base that you haven't already conquered. I'm trying to conquer this base, but so is the computer. So what I'm desperately attempting to do is surround it with missile launchers, but he's launching tanks against my missile launchers. And every time I try to go blow up his tanks or fight him, I end up running out of energy and explode and go back to my home base. This is where some of the strategy comes into play in 
Herzog's why you want to drop a combination of missile launchers and tanks so that your tanks give protection to the missile launchers. But more importantly, you want to take over that base so you can use it as a base. And replenish your energy. But you can see this guy is not making it easy for me. Let's see how this plays out because it requires some persistence on my part. He just shot me in the back, stupid blue robot. You're gonna pay for that. I've got the money. I'm building the gun turret with missile launcher thing, which hopefully gives me just the edge that I need. You see, the gun turret, the GRM-34A, is good for this kind of stuff. It can take a lot of damage, and it shoots the robot in the face, as well as showering it with missiles. That's why it's the most expensive unit in the game that takes the longest time to build. Now that I have one of them in place, it's almost destroyed by the way. I'm going to build a couple more missile launchers and surround this thing, then I'm going to make my move. I'm building more infantry with the capture base command AT-101. Once this base is mine, I'll start collecting income from it and build new units right there, which should eventually discourage the robot who will most likely pick another base to take over. Let's keep an eye on the map and see what our friendly enemy robot is up to. Why, he's going to pay us a visit. Goodbye, moron. <laughs> the supply droid is good. If you're going to be doing something else on the map, it'll usually refill your your missile launchers with fresh missiles. Sometimes it just gets confused and drives itself into a corner. But uh, one thing you cannot do is just fly away and leave all of your missile launchers unattended because they will run out of ammo and the enemy robot will just shoot all of them. Some of these levels are big, they don't make it easy to fly all the way in and drop units behind the enemy lines. Uh oh, yeah, you see this? That's not gonna work out too well for me. Oh, actually I pulled that off, almost. <laughs> You heartless enemy robot! That tank was expensive. Oh, 
All right, now pay attention to this sequence of events. Because the base that's just south of the one that I conquered is is pretty heavily fortified. It's very difficult to take over because of the distance between the two bases. I'm having a tough time airlifting missile launchers in there. So instead what I'm going to do is conquer a base on the other side of the map that isn't defended. Or at least not defended well. While leaving my other base to basically fend for itself. And as the action is, is unfolding here, you can hear what's happening. And you can see it on the map, too. The enemy robot is focusing on the top right part of the screen. So I'm hoping that I've left enough units up there to hold that base long enough for me to conquer another base. Because one thing to keep in mind is that if, you, if you've already conquered a base, even if the enemy robot starts dropping troops in there, it's still your base. So even if the enemy has three of the four dots lit up on that base, you can still collect your units from it because it's still your base. Conquering bases is very powerful in Herzog's Y. I laugh at his feeble attempt to do damage to my home base with a single troop. They don't pack much firepower. At the time of Herzog Zwei's release, there was nothing else like this, or at least not that I'm aware of. Certainly not on a home game console. This predates Command and Conquer and numerous other 1990s real-time strategy games. And, and what those other games, like Command and Conquer, lacked was the ability to transform into a giant robot and get into the middle of the action. I love that about Herzog's Y. Perhaps it actually distracts the game from its own real-time strategy ambitions, because as I said, I think the maps were designed with the units in mind. But the more time that you spend with this game, the more you realize that the robot is the star of the game. While you don't see it as much when playing in the computer, if you're playing a human opponent, the human will obviously be watching all of your motions as you're making them and plan accordingly. What my buddy and I would do when we played this game back in high school is split the map evenly and amass enormous armies of 50 units apiece, which is the maximum number of units that you can have on screen at once per team. So 100 units on screen plus the two robots. <laughs> The game really slowed down to a crawl. It's a shame that Technosoft never released a sequel to this on the Genesis because I think, as good as it is, Herzog's Y leaves some room for improvement. It could have used more units. Because after a while you learn that the armored car and the bike are pretty much useless. The only units that really matter are infantry tanks and missile launchers. Except when you get into some of the water levels, the boats are actually kind of handy, but they're basically just floating tanks. Spaceships of red, blue, and green, you can hear the alien lady scream. Waldung. I just like to say it. Waldung. It's fun. I'll jump to the end of this battle where the computer has put up a good fight. This has been far more challenging than the earlier ice fry battle where the computer has countered every one of my moves, and this level in particular, Waldung, is a tricky level when trying to airlift missile launchers to surround enemy bases, forcing me to get creative and down and dirty when battling these things. Taking out his tanks one by one, conquering bases one by one, and keeping a nice complement of those expensive cannon missile launcher things. Ultimately, every level ends more or less the same way, though, with me airlifting tanks behind his base. One after another, doing damage until it's eventually destroyed, because at that point he just can't keep up. This one is tricky. Everything is just far enough away to make airlifting things and returning without exploding difficult. You may notice that when flying Close to one of my home bases, if I'm low on energy, I transform into robot form. It, it uses less energy when walking than flying. I mean, everybody knows that. 
if you're piloting a transforming robot, it's easier to walk than fly. 80s cartoons have taught me everything I need to know in life. Except I forget what the other half of the battle is. Ah, see? And you thought this game was easy. It's not easy. I really wanted to conquer that base just to the east of this one, but no dice. So I'll launch some tanks with the BA-001C command and a motorcycle, the FWA. Why is it what does the FWA stand for? I actually don't know. Friends with Attitude. There we go, I overwhelmed him with motorcycles. There's something gratifying about that. Did I say the motorcycles were useless earlier? Okay, not that useless. They're good in a pinch because you can build them quickly and then flood the enemy base with them. But they don't do much damage because they're friends with attitude. Edit, edit, edit station one. Edit Station 1 wants to live in wall dung. It's the place with the swamp and the trees and the lack of the space bees. I think it's good that I showed a loss to let you know that, in fact, you can lose to the computer when you're playing terribly, as I just was. I, I was careless. I put up no defense around my home base, and then I bragged about it. <laughs> you, you probably want to use some defense around your home base because when a tank gets in there, and start shooting at it, you lose like half your energy without even noticing. So, we're gonna go Vulcan this time, Type C. Once again, I'm gonna start uh, by checking the map. Okay. And instead of using armored cars this time, I thought I was being clever, like, save some bucks, use armored cars, they're useless. Just, just wait for the tank. All right, he's going up there. There's three bases to my north that aren't mine. I probably could conquer the, or take, Conquer, capture those. He's immediately going for that one. So what I'm gonna do is head up here to my base, set up some missile launchers. At the one to the north of me. But I wanna keep him away. Each map is a little bit different, but they all play more or less the same. I'm running low on money already, so I'm going to use a uh, armored car to protect these things, which is probably not the best idea, but it's going to have to suffice for the moment. Now he's going down there to the bottom left to conquer an enemy base. Let's keep one eye on him, what he's doing. He's building defense. Now remember that you can change your unit's command after you build it. So you can build a bunch of tanks for defense and then change them all to attack home base, which is what he did in the previous game. Nah, he's launching a tank at me right now. Where was he? Okay, he's down there in the bottom left. I'm going to intercept that tank and destroy it. See what he's doing? He's changing his command to attack home base, and here comes the tanks. Okay, do we drop two of them? So 
And he's immediately launching enemies at me. Playing aggressively today. You see his strategy over there. He keeps launching things at me from that side of the screen. Kill that troop. There's no troop. So he's wasting a lot of time and money attacking me, and he's not getting anywhere at the moment, so this is good. So I will let him get destroyed. See that? I chased him back to his home base, blew up his tank, Dropped a missile launcher, and had time to build another missile launcher. In fact, now I'm going to order another one. And I'm going to sit here and blow him up again. Ah, there he goes. He's dead. Very good. So now I have three missile launchers surrounding his base, which I said is the magic number. Three. Three is the magic number. of missile launchers that you need to really be a pain in his butt. But I'm going to make four just for yucks. Get rid of them. <laughs> Push them away. He's not going to be able to hover over that base long enough to pick up anything. Build a troop. Build a tank. And actually, this is a good base to have because it's a straight shot up to his home base. All my troops are confused. They can't find their way into the base. There we go. Alright, for yucks, let's make a uh, tank that's going to attack his home base and concentrate on conquering that next base. Build some missile launchers to use as a shield. playing a little smarter this time than last time. I'm gonna make a motorcycle. Send that up there just to distract them. While that's doing that, I'm gonna build another missile launcher. There we go, see? While he's away, I'm gonna go up here and see if there's a tank here. I'm gonna blow that tank up, alright. So while he's busy doing some other things over there, I am going to take over this base. Make some troops. Focusing very hard now, I don't wanna lose this one. Sending troops up over the river of lava to him. Before he notices what I'm doing. Do not fall into the lava crater, you troops. But he just conquered that base, which I don't appreciate. But I now have this base, which is right next to his home base, so. Or I will if I can get this troop up here. I have one troop stuck on the corner here. Can you see this? <laughs> Everybody get some popcorn! Let's watch Mark lose his second tutorial game! See what he's done here? He's actually playing a pretty good game. has successfully managed to destroy my defense because I let him get a foothold near me.
This base is still not mine. Like, I have a troop sitting right there, but the troop won't capture the damn base. That's how dumb your troops are. Here he comes. So we're not even going to let him get near it. Alright, we're going to take that guy out. Put another cannon here. And then I'm going to make an attack on his base. Can you see the anger in Mark's face? Oh, this is great. I love it. He looks almost as angry as when they tried to remake Magnum P.I. Alright, now I've had it. Now it's time to start putting him on the, de on the uh, defense. It's being a real pain in the ass this game. Oh, he just conquered that base. Terrific. I'm going on the offensive. I'm sick of playing defense. So I'm putting one, sending one tank to him. And I'm gonna airlift one from the other side. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to destroy all of his forces. fly right down to my base now that it's mine and launch more at him no no this can't be what you're watching is a lie he's turned the tables using strategy okay one tank from the front one tank from behind Energy. This would be a good time to start taking over some of the other bases, but I think I can get them. I did lose the last game because I was being cocky. I'm gonna win this time by being cocky. I built some motorcycles, some FWAs. So I'll just drive it over here and let them attack the enemy base. I'm gonna go back over here and make another tank to attack. Now I'm gonna really attack the enemy's base. So I've distracted him, took over one of his bases, got some more money, all good. Now I'm launching tanks at his home base. fight on this one. I gotta give him credit. That's right, I sent a tank up there. Go and deal with it. Lots of focusing on this one. Clearly he wants this base. I don't know why he keeps dropping supply droids. That was not a good move. <laughs> While he's doing that... Send up a bike, followed by a tank.
Got a couple shots in there before the bike got killed. Damage on him. He's got a nice defense around his base. He's not making this easy. I want to keep him away from this one, though. This one's very important to me. There he goes. Coming down again. Dropping supply droids. Uh, supply droids? I guess he thinks he's going to, uh. Be building a base here or something. Alright. This guy's out of ammo. Gonna refill his ammo. Put him down. Gonna grab this guy. We're gonna come up here. Gonna let him do his job and blow up his base. Yes! Alright. A bit clumsy, but I got the job done. What we've learned, boys and girls, is that the computer is smarter than Mark. But Mark is... He is persistent. Well, alright! Thank you for watching my feature review of Herzog Zwei. If you don't have this game in your collection, hopefully you will soon. You can find a copy online in the future or whatever terrible year you live in. It's not inexpensive, but it's not ridiculously overpriced either. It's worth it. It's Herzog Zwei. For a real challenge, teach one of your friends how to play the game. Playing a human is a totally different experience than playing the computer because you always know what a computer is thinking by looking at the expression on its screen. Well done! What Edit Station 1 is really thinking is, wow, I'm gonna let Mark finally leave video game purgatory now that he's defeated Herzog Zwei. Is that true? Are you gonna let me finally go? Can I go home? No, nope, because you found the codes on the internet. You cheated! Well, yeah, but I beat this game when I was, like, 16. I don't have any VHS footage of that, but I can assure you I had a sweet mullet. And a denim jacket, which complemented the mullet, because it kind of flowed out. You fool! You still have to review Super Pac-Man! You'll never defeat Super Pac-Man! You're doomed! Well done. Well, since I'm not allowed to leave, I guess I'll see you in the next Classic Game Room feature review of Super Pac-Man here in space. Somewhere in the future, maybe. Here's Zog's Y. One of the best games ever. Period. Enjoy.